Okay guys, welcome back to my garage. Um, just another quickie update on the Phoenix 2x2 CNC router and where I'm at. Been pretty busy. Um, I made a new stock to support the monitor and the computer. The computer mounts on the back of the monitor. As I mentioned previously, I like the Lenovo Tiny M92Ps. Um, they actually make a um, bracket. Uh, Lenovo makes a bracket that lets you slide the PC in and out. So I like using that. That's in there. Also took care of some cable management issues uh, while I was waiting on parts for the back panel which came in. Um, I wanted to clean up and make it easier to get cables back into the uh, control cabinet. Um, so I made a couple of modifications. I put a larger junction box and a section of uh, pipe between the box and the cabinet and then the box to the uh, cable carrier. I made a notch in the side of the box for the cable carrier and secured it. So that's done. And I also got a piece of uh, one inch uh, Ultraflex um, conduit. I got it from McMaster Cars called Ultraflex Conduit. You can buy it in uh, whatever lengths you need. Minimum is five foot. I think it's five, five foot increments anyway. Uh, pretty reasonable. Um, you get it next day. I don't know how McMaster does it. Um, the shipping on this stuff for me was like 10 bucks, so it's pretty reasonable. Uh, I really like this stuff because it's really flexible. It's not like seal tight you get at the home center. Uh, so I'll show you that as well. And of course the uh, back panel, uh, just about ready to start wiring up. I got the new uh, uh, wireway from uh, AutomationDirect.com. They also, anything over 50 bucks, it's free. Uh, FedEx two-day shipping, so I really like those guys for that. I got the toroidal transformer from Antec, A-N-T-E-K, Inc.com. Um, I had, you can buy the whole power supply from those guys, which is really nice. It's on aluminum plate. It's worth the money. Um, I had a couple of filter capacitors. I had a bridge rectifier, so I decided just to buy the transformer and build my own power supply. It's an unregulated power supply for the DMM DYN2 uh, servos. Um, they require up to 60 volts of DC input and uh, this thing uh, should put out between 56 and 60 volts of DC uh, when it's done. And by the way, the calculation to figure out what an AC transformer after rectification um, would give you DC wise is you multiply AC output by 1.414 and that'll give you what your DC output's going to be. So anyway, I'm going to pick up the camera real quick, go handheld, and walk you around the improvements that I've made to the router. Um, I wanted to spend the time and, in my mind, do things right so it's easy to work on, easy to maintain, easy to modify, easy to pull cables in. That's why I spent the time on uh, the cable management system on the router itself uh, to make it easier on me and again make it cleaner and then these uh, AC servos have cables and connectors that are a little bit larger than the original uh, DC servos that were on it so uh, the one inch Ultraflex is going to carry the two axis uh, uh, X and Z um, DMM AC servo motor cables and then the existing uh, half inch ones will carry any smaller low voltage stuff that I need um, I'm probably going to put uh, mist coolant on it, so I'll run a couple little uh, airlines through one of them. And then um, the limit switches, limit switch wiring through the other. I'm kind of thinking about putting a terminal block in the gantry and then running one cable back down with a multi-conductor rather than a whole bunch of small ones. Um, not that there's a, a lot to worry about. There's only two limit switches. is going to be the Z plus and X minus up there. I don't have any use for the up ones on the ends. There's no need for it. Well, if you set soft limits, the Centroid CNC software will stop it from uh, exceeding the travel or hitting the hard stop. Um, but uh, I think I want to use, uh, I want to put a jack up there for a touch probe or some, a touch, uh, tool touch probe that's always mounted to the head or somewhere I can easily grab it and just, just slip it underneath uh, the tool and do a touch off. Uh, so it's always there. I don't have to grab it or whatever. It's just sitting in a pocket up there. Maybe I'll 3D print it or something. Um, and then, you know, just, I don't know. I can't think of anything else right now, but it's nice to have already run the cable through the cable management system than to figure it out and say, oh, crap, i got to thread another cable through this whole thing. 
So kind of thinking about that stuff right now. So anyway, let's pick it up and uh, go handheld. Okay, this is just this is just a weatherproof uh, bell box from the home center. Um, it's much bigger than what was there. The one that was there had a cover and it was permanent. It was you couldn't really get into it. And here, at least now that uh, when the cables come through, I can take this cover off and feed them down into the cabinet. And then here you can see you can see the. Uh, the conduits is two female adapters here and then a section of inch and a half pipe. This is plumbing pipe. Normally you'd use gray conduit. But I did the plumbing pipe because I didn't want to buy a 10 foot stick of gray conduit. Still worked. And then uh, it drops into the, uh, into the cabinet here. These are inch and a half chase nipples. You get them from the uh, electric department uh, at the home center. And then here's our one inch ultra flex conduit. Um, it's just there was an existing hole there. I just opened it up with my knockout set for a one inch trade size conduit and it comes around and it drops into this little junction box that was existing and it'll go straight in and feed through this cable carrier. Um, then these are the two half inch. I went ahead and replaced them because it was inexpensive. I went ahead and ordered some new stuff there from uh, McMaster. And then here's the uh, the uh, stock for the monitor and the PC. Here you see the, the monitor. This is a Visa mount. I got them off of eBay. Um, it's a monitor Visa mount, and it's and this is its mounting point here. So what I do is I drill a half inch hole through that, and I welded a nut. Actually, I welded a bolt to a washer, and then I welded it to this to the stock so it sticks up. I'll replace that nut with a lock nut to set the uh, tension on it so it'll it'll swivel. That actually works pretty good. Also, I machined a, an eighth inch Delrin washer between this metal and this washer. So it uh, has something to pivot on. This is the bracket for the Lenovo Tiny M92P PC. Um, the PC slides in. Actually, I got this backwards. I want the PC to slide in this way, and this is the mounting tab, so I need to flip it around. Um, it'll probably be all right if I slip it in that way as well. Um, this is a keyboard, just sheet metal keyboard tray that I made. It's just a piece of, I forget if it's 18 gauge or what, that's bent. And then this is a piece of sheet, same sheet metal that's bent. And then it's pop riveted to this, uh, to this uh, bracket. And then there's my touch screen monitor. And then here you see the, I, this was a scrap that I used from the, the original uprights that were, that were welded here for the enclosure. So I just cut it, 45'd it, and uh, uh, this is a 3 quarter inch bolt, but I also machined a 3 quarter inch spacer so I don't crush it. And that spacer is machined very tightly to this bolt so there's no slop. Again, there's a couple Delrin washers here and here. I should have done the same thing as I did up here and put in a stud and then put in a lock, a lock nut. And it's not too late to do that. I can take this all out, get a piece of three quarter inch all thread and then tack it down in the nut and let it stick up and then get a lock nut here. That way the lock nut won't turn. Right now you can see the whole, well it's not turning now but it's there. The, uh, the bolt will turn and I can't tighten it up, tighten it up enough for it not to turn. So here's the inside of the uh, gantry. There's our inch and a half. Um, gonna have to be really careful now that I'm looking at it. This uh, block, uh, which is the ball nut block, is gonna pass right in front of that. So that might not work out. I may have to raise this up a little bit to clear that block. Um, I used an existing hole and I didn't notice that it was uh, right behind the uh, ball nut. Uh, mounting block so I'll have to raise that up and fix it and then uh, plug it. Um, I've got some uh, pulley stock coming to extend the the motors um, so that they line up with each other and uh, so that's about it for the machine right now 
like I said, just notice that. That's not going to work out. So I'm going to have to raise that up to clear, to get out of the way. There's more, there's far more clearance up in this area than there is down here. So I'll just plug that and I'll swing it up and it'll be all right. This is a, an access cover. I don't know, probably for maybe lubricating the ball screw here. So that access cover is removable maybe to access the ball screw. You can't do anything. You can take this front cover off. I'm not really sure what the purpose is of that cover back there. So I'm not worried about blocking it with the, uh, the conduit. So let's go over to the, uh, to the back panel, show you where that's at. All right, so everything's laid out. I got my wire way all uh, ready to go. Um, the pop rivets are just holding everything down. This skin comes off to uh, reveal the, it's just a protective piece of plastic here to protect the aluminum. This, I think it's 50-52 aluminum. So I'll pull all that off when I'm done drilling everything, which I'm pretty close to. The, the drives are mounted, acorns are mounted, the power, the toroidal power supply is mounted. Um, it takes 120 or 220 in. I'm going to be powering this with 220. It has multi-tap outputs here, so you can have different voltages if you wanted to. I'm only going to run the the uh, stepper or stepper, the servo drives off of that. This is Acorn's power supply. It's dedicated logic for Acorn. This is an e-stop contactor. Um, don't use charge pumps with Acorn unless you're using uh, Gecko G540. Um, there's no fault output that will control this. DC power will come out of this. Both legs will go to the e-stop contactor and then both legs will come out and then feed the drive. So if there's a fault, the e-stop contactor will open and open the power to the drives and that's the, that's the right way to do it. Um, fuse blocks. Um, I'm using 250 volt 30 amp fuse blocks and the reason why I'm doing that is because you can go to the home center and buy fuses pretty easily um, rather than uh, they have 600 volt 30 amp. The, the cartridge is a little bit smaller and a little bit harder to find. Not impossible. And then this space here is going to be reserved for relays. Um, I still have to uh, uh, decide on output relays. Um, one of them for the vacuum pump, one of them for the vacuum. I'm trying to decide what to do there, so that's what this space is reserved for. Um, i got to give that a little bit of thought. So, anyway, getting really close to starting to wire this thing up. Uh, VFD for the spindle motor will go on the back side of the, the control cabinet um, in the area where the vacuum pump is on the machine. Um, the cabinet is not big enough for the VFD and it doesn't doesn't hurt to put the VFD separate from all this stuff so you don't have VFD noise. So the control cable will come out of here and it'll go drop to the back to come to feed the VFD. And then two of these contact blocks are 240 volts to the VFD. So VFD fusing will be here. And then this other two is control power for the entire back panel, the servo power, the logic power, and that sort of thing. That those fuses can be much smaller than the fuses for the for the VFD spindle motor. So that's where I'm at. Just wanted to share with you where I'm at. Um, I have Monday, Tuesday next week to work on this, and then I've got a job to do on Thursday, Friday. So we'll see how far I get. I think in a day I can get this thing all wired up and uh, maybe start uh, getting ready to bench test the servo motors. So until next time, talk to you guys soon.